Hi, this is Shell of Shell's Creations. Today I want to show you how quick and easy it is to create a collage using collage templates. Photo collages are a very common trend right now. Collage templates make it easy to make collages on your layouts. I have the collage template square. These templates are 10 inches square so that you can um, shrink them down a bit. That helps avoid a problem with um, the gutter if you're printing them in a photo book. Um, but you could enlarge them if you wanted to or you could shrink them if you needed something smaller. I also have the collage longs. These are all 12 inches either long or wide and remember they can be rotated and so there are six different arrangements in a narrow long or wide format. But today the example I'm going to show you in case you want to follow along is using the collage template sampler. This is available free on my blog. I'll put the link in the description below and you can follow along and create something similar. This will show you how easy it is to create a layout using these collage templates. Other products that we'll be using today to create this layout will be the Make a Splash Kit. Uh, we'll take a few of the splashes from that and some of the papers. And the Make a Splash Word Art will add a quick title to our layout. Okay, let's begin. We are working in Photoshop Elements today and I have the Collage Template Square Sampler. Um, and the pictures that I want to use are open and a few of the elements that I want to use. The first thing I want to do is move the Collage Template onto a piece of paper. So I'm going to click on the top photo spot, hold down shift and click on the bottom photo spot. That will select all of them. Then using my move tool, I want to drag those down onto my paper that I'm going to begin with. It'll be right there centered on my layout. Now we're ready to add the photos to our collage. On this big photo, I'm going to use this large photo, underwater photo of my daughter. So I'm going to drag that on. Okay, let's clip the two together so that I can see what I'm doing. So hold down the alt key so that you get that a uh, clever little uh, icon down in bet uh, when your mouse is on the crack in between, dividing line between the photo and the image. That'll clip it to it. Um, and you can move it around to get it where you want. You might even want to shrink down the size a little bit. Remember if you hold down the Alt key, you shrink to the center in all directions. Uh, adjust that till you get it where you want it. Then you can double click anywhere on the photo or click the green checkbox. Okay, the next spot I want to fill is this one, so I'm going to click on it. Now I have my auto select layer button checked, so if I click on this spot, that'll be the next one we fill. I think I'll put this photo of my son on that one. Not a flattering photo of my husband, so we're going to crop him out of that. Let's go ahead and drag that onto our working layout. And again, I'm going to clip the two together now. I've showed you that you can hold down the Alt key and go ahead and click on that spot. Also, Control G will accomplish the same thing. Let's just put Marky in that spot right there. Uh, okay, how about this one right here? Let's put the photo of the baby there. It's tiny, but the photo of him is fuzzy. So we'll drag that onto that spot. Um, clip the two together using Control G or the holding down the Alt key. Looks like I need to shrink him just a little bit. Hold down, holding down Alt will shrink in a uh, to the center, shrink evenly in all directions. Locate him to get him where I want. Again, you can double click on the photo or click on the green photo box. Uh, and in this last spot, let's put this photo of my daughter coming out of the slide. Let's go ahead and drag that on this one. Um, I could clip it together right now since it's not showing. That may be difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and move it down just so it covers at least a portion of it and then it'll be easier to get it shrunk to the right spot. Um, how about that big? Yeah, that's about right. Now you'll notice I said the last spot. Uh, these are the four photos that I want to use on this and I don't really want to use one in this spot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this spot right here and that's where I'm going to put my title. I could add some journaling there. Uh, another option if you don't have enough photos to fill all the spot is to fill some of them with paper or again use them as a location for photos or journaling. Um, and you may find that you would just want to skip some and that that works best on your layout. But for now I'm just going to turn that one off. Okay, the next thing is I like my photos to have a, a white border around them and so we're going to work on that. Um, the quickest way to do this is to group these all together and just do it once. And so starting with um, the large photo which is above photo number one, I'm going to do Command or Control E and that groups those together. It crops that photo to match that spot. Um, skip the one that I turned off, uh, the baby one, Command or Control E. Uh, Commander Control E and just keep going on down the line until you have all of them actually cropped like that. Then the next thing I want to do is group them all together or uh, merge them into the same layer. So I'm going to highlight photo number one, hold down my shift key and come down and click on photo number five. Then I'm going to right click 
and merge those layers. Now they're all together and that will make things a little bit more simple for me to add the white border. Holding down your Commander Control key, click on this image in your layers palette. You'll see the marching ants that go around each of your photos. Uh, we need to make sure that we have the white selected as our foreground color. That is the color that I want to stroke the edges with here. So now that white is our foreground color, under Edit we want to go down to Stroke or Outline the Selection. The distance I'm going to choose is probably 35 to 40 and I want it to be on the inside. If you choose center your corners will kind of get chopped off. If you choose outside they'll get really cropped off. But that does mean that my stroke will be on the inside. Be sure when you're planning whether you want that to be on the inside when you're shrinking those photos. And there we go. Now the other thing I want to do is add a shadow to these while I have them um, Control D to deselect while I have them selected. I'm going to go ahead and add a shadow. I want the paper shadow. Double click on that and we'll, it'll add the paper style to that. Kind of like that shadow a little bit better. Okay, now we're ready to add our title. Let's bring up the title and drag that onto our layout. The title is from the Word Art, the Make a Splash Word Art collection. I need to move that up above the photo uh, and we'll locate that in this spot right over here. I can move it up a little bit and leave a little more room for journaling on the bottom if I wanted to um, or move it down. Okay, uh, I feel like it just needs something. That's kind of a, this, there's some heavy here and some heavy there and so I just want to scatter a few other things on the layout. And so let's do this splash. I think I want to put that splash kind of right over here. Uh, make it a little bit smaller and rotate it just a bit. That'll kind of balance things off and then I need something else on the top. I think what I'm going to add is a little banner on the top because I really like banners. This, this is, um, it's the flag of five which means that the flag is the shape and there are five of them in, in this collection. So let's go ahead and um, highlight the top one. You'll notice that these are not in numerical order going up and down. That's They are in um, order left to right but because they're overlapped they won't appear in the same order up and down. Uh, hold down your shift key and click on the bottom one and then we're ready to drag this one onto our layout. Let's go ahead and drag it on. And then I'm going to put it up here in the corner and I think I'm going to rotate it something like that right up here in the corner of our layout. Click the checkbox or double click on the area. Now I want the same, um, I want a shadow on that as well. The first one I'm going to put almost a plaid onto it. Let's go ahead and drag that one down onto our layout. Let's move it up here and clip it to that first one. Um, that would be flag number one. Uh, we can clip them together again with the control G. This is the same concept as what you were doing when you were doing your pictures. Now I want the, the plaid to be um, rotated so that it looks a little bit better with it. I, I want it to either match exactly or be on the diagonal and I think I want to go with the diagonal on this. Again double click on it to, to confirm or select the green checkbox and I think I want to put that same pattern on the fourth one and so I'm going to hold down my alt key which will duplicate that layer and I'm just going to drag it a little bit um, and then I'm going to move it in my layers palette up to flag number four. I wouldn't want to do the outside ones or I, I'm choosing one and four out of five so that it's just kind of it's not too symmetrical and I also might need to shift that one or tw rotate it just a bit. Okay on flag number two let's put a darker bold color there on the edge to balance things out. I've got these dark glasses, I've got her dark goggles, I want a third dark thing. Uh, layouts often look better in um, threes and so we're going to go ahead and add a, a darker color to that spot. Let's drag it on. This is one of the papers from the Make a Splash Kit. Clip the two together there. Okay, um, and I, I have a lot of yellow and so in this last one I think I'll go ahead and put yellow in that one. So again, um, let's take this yellow and drag it on and clip it to flag number five. And I think for the spot in between I'm going to choose a pattern. Um, I have a, pa a heart pattern that has yellow and blue. It also has a little bit of green and a little bit of orange but I think that one will work well. So let's go ahead and drag that one onto that middle spot. Whoa, ended up with it way down here. Okay, let's rotate it so that it fits with the direction of the flag. I think they look a little bit better that way. Um, and double click to confirm the rotation and clip those two together. 
and I'm going to move it around to see where I'd like it. I'd like it to have more blues and more yellows if it could. Um, about right there. And there you go. That's how quick and easy it is to make a collage clipping your photos to the collage templates. If you have any questions, you can reach me at shells.creations1 at gmail.com. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.